I'm reviewing chapter seven by expanding on interference, diffraction, also lasers. So let's start with question number one. Question number one says, what happens if two live waves with the same amplitude interferes constructively? What happens if they interfere destructively? So you know that a constructive interference means that the two waves are in phase, so it means phase difference between them is zero, so bright spots or fringes appears on the screen. So by um, having two waves with the same amplitude, so the resultant wave is twice as individual. So let's assume that amplitude for the first one is A, and the second wave have the same amplitude A, so the resultant wave is 2A. Now for destructive, the two waves are out of phase, it means that the uh, phase difference between them is 180 degree, so dark spots or fringes appear. Why is that? Because the resultant wave, the amplitude is zero. So that's the, about question number one. So constructive have in phase and bright one for destructive out of phase and 180 degree dark spots we have. And the second question, interference in sound is recognized by differences in volume. How is interference in light recognized? So of course by, by differences in brightness, the brightness, the light brightness changes. Number three, a double slit interference experiment is performed with red light and then again with blue light. In what ways do the two interference patterns differ? Hinge, consider the difference in wavelengths for the two colors of light. So, so if we do the double slit experiment, youngest double slit experiment, we have two narrow slits separated by D, a distance of D, and we have a screen in here. In here. If I use red light for the first time, red one, so let's say that the red first order number, first order number, appears in here when m is equal to 1, this angle. What happens if I use blue one, blue light? So when I'm using a blue one, a blue one, a blue one, so it, the first order number, it doesn't appear with the same angle, but it's different. Why is that? Because uh, smaller, it has smaller angle smaller angle so that we, for the green for the blue light we have a smaller uh, angle so because you know that sine theta is proportional to lambda so the longer wavelengths have has more angle or the angle is greater than the shorter wavelength question number four Question number four, what data would you need to cal collect to correctly calculate the wavelengths of light in double slit experiment? Now, you know that the equation d sine theta equals m lambda. This is equation is used for bright, bright spots or fringes. And we have another equation, d sine theta equals m plus one half lambda so this equation is used for dark fringes, dark fringes. So what data do we need to calculate the uh, accurate lambda? So of course we need D, we need theta, we need M. So D and theta and M. D is the distance between the two slits, angle, and also we need the M or the number. Question number five, if a double slit experiment were performed under water, how would the observed interference pattern be affected? Hence, consider how light changes in medium with higher index of refraction. So now we know that the wavelength changes with medium. If the medium changes, the wavelength also changes. If you remember chapter 3, when we talked about waves, 
we said that when we have two medium, first medium and second medium, let's say, say is air and water. Now, when light passes through air to water, wavelength changes. So, wavelength decreases means that the speed of light also decreases in water. It means that the angle also decreases. So, also decreases. So, the answer, theta would decrease because lambda is shorter in water. If you remember, and I tell you that the frequency remains the same, remain the same as we taught uh, about that in chapter 3. Number 6, because of their great distance from us, stars are essentially point sources of light. If two stars were near each other in the sky, would the light from them produce an interference pattern? Explain or answer. So of course no, because the light from this, the stars is not coherent. So uh, remember, to, be, uh, to have interference, we have to have a light or coherent, coherent light, coherent light. Um, number seven, assume that white light is uh, provided by a single source in a double slit in experiment. Describe the um, interference pattern in one, if one slit is covered with a red uh, filter and the other is covered with a blue one. Okay, now this question is telling you that we have double slit experiment, double slit experiment, and the two slits, one of them is covered with a red filter, and the second one is covered with blue one. So, do you see any pattern for, as a result of interference? So, of course, no because so, uh, light is from the two waves are uh, is different wavelength and so we can interfere because it, does, it is not coherent. Question number um, uh, different. Sorry, let's move on to chap question number eight. Okay. An interference pattern is formed by using green light and apparatus in which the two slits can move. If the slits are moved further apart, will the separation of the bright, bright fringes in the pattern decreases, increases, or remain unchanged? Why? Now, we said that d sine theta equal to m lambda. So sine theta inversely proportional to d D, as you know, is a distance between the two fringes. Because sine theta is inversely proportional to D. So as the distance between the two slits decreases, the angle between the fringes all, uh, increases because inversely proportional. So the separation of fringes decreases because D and sine theta are inversely proportional. Now let's move on to question nine. Question nine. Okay, light falls on two slits, spaced 0.33 millimeter apart. So D equal to 0.33 millimeter. And if the angle between the first dark fringe, first dark fringe, M should be zero. Because for first dark fringe, M is zero. For the second dark fringe, M equal to one. For the third dark, M equal to two. So M equal to zero because of first dark fringe. Now um, the angle is 0 0.055 degree. Now we need what we need light falls if the angle between the first dark fringes and the central maximum 0 0.055 degree what is the wavelength we need lambda we need lambda now to solve this question 
Be aware of units. You have to know exactly the units. As you see in here, D is in millimeters. So you have to convert it to meter by multiplying it by 10 to the power of negative 3. So now you have the distance in meters. Also, you have to know the exact equation, formula you should use. Because it says a dark fringe, dark fringe. So D sine theta equals m plus one half lambda. This is the right equation for a dark fringe. Now, let us rearrange the equation. We need theta, we need, uh, sorry, angle. So uh, lambda is equal to D sine theta over m plus one half. Now, D, as you see in here, a point 33 times 10 to the power of negative 3 and times sine the angle of point 055 degree and m is 0 over 1 over 2. So uh, by calculating the by calculating the um, equation we could find the lambda. Now by calculating the uh, equations we have 0.33 times 10 to the power of negative 3 times sine 0.055 divided by 0.5 equals to. Alright, so the answer is 6.33 times 10 to the power of negative 7 meter. But in Rosari's exam, at uh, they won't give you in meter wavelengths of light because all short wavelengths we have. So you have to multiply it by 10 to the power of 9 to have the answer in millimeters. And sorry, nanometers. So the wavelength is 633 nanometers. This is for question number 9. So when we ask for wavelengths, so we have to use the right equation. Now, question number 10. Question number 10. A sodium vapor street lamp produces light with, a, with nearly monochromatic. If the light shines on a wooden door in which there are two straight parallel tracks, uh, an interference pattern will form on a distant wall behind the door. The slits have a separation of. Do you see now we have D, question number 10. We have D, D is equal to 0 0.3096, again millimeter. And the second or the maximum, second or the maximum means M equal to 2. Second or the Maximum. Maximum, it means bright. It means bright. So the second order bright, or the second bright, or the maximum occurred at an angle theta equal to 0 0.218 degree from the central maximum. Determine the following quantity. A. We need the wavelengths of the light. We need lambda wavelengths of the light. The angle of the third order, B, we need theta, when we have M equal to 3, third order maxima. C, we need again the angle when we have fourth or M equal to 4, fourth order maxima. Now, firstly, we have to find lambda by using the right equation because it is bright so we should use d sine theta equals m lambda. For dark, we said d sine theta equals m plus one half lambda. Now d sine theta equal to m lambda for a bright one. Lambda equals to d sine theta over m. So rearrange the equation. D again, as you see in here, in millimeter. So we have to multiply it by 10 to the power of negative 3 to change it to meter. Now d 0.3096 times 10 to the power of negative 3 times sine 0.218 divided by m 
which is equal to 2. Now, by calculating the equation, we should have the wavelength. Now, upon it, 3, 0, 9, 6 times 10 to the power of negative 3 times sine 0 0.218 divided by 2. So now the equation tells me that lambda is equal to 5889 times 10 to the power of negative 7 meter. Again, uh, maybe the answer is multiple choice. In multiple choices is in nanometers. So try to multiply it by 10 to the power of 9 to have 588588.9 nanometers. This is for question A. Question B. It says find the angle which the search or the maximum appears. Now we have to find theta now. Again, same equation, d sine theta equals m lambda. We need theta, so sine theta equals m lambda over d. Now theta equal to sine inverse m lambda over d. So sine inverse m we have is 3 lambda is 5.889 times 10 to the power of negative 7. Of course, you have to use the 1 in meters. Over d, d is 0 0.3 thousand, 0 0.96 times 10 to the power of negative 3. Now, some students, they, can, uh, they have difficulties to resolve this uh, kind of uh, equations or formulas, but it is easy, just multiply the number is undivided, but you have to have a bracket in here. Also, a plus shifted sign answer. So it's so easy. 3 times 5.889 times 10 to the power of negative 7 divided by a bracket 0 0.3096 times 10 to the power of negative 3. Close the bracket, equal. Now shifted sign answer. So it's 0 0.327, 0 0.327 degree. Now C is same as the second one, but instead of using 3, you have to use 4 because you have the fourth order number. So it's the same, you could try it at home uh, whenever you have time. Now, let's move on to another question, question number 11. Now, if question number 11, uh, what does light um, produce a pattern similar uh, with, uh, with an interference pattern when a um, single slit, we use uh, through a single slit. Now, because of diffraction, because of diffraction, if I have a single slit, also I have a similar pattern to inter uh, when, we, when I use a double slit interference. So with the single slit, again, why is that? Because of diffraction. Diffraction. Remember diffraction, Huygens principle? So uh, according to Huygens principle, if the light wants to pass this slit, okay, so the front wave, the front wave, every portion of a front wave is a new source of wave. So when the light reaches this part, the, we have too many sources in here, as in Huygens principle. So that's why I have a new waves in here. So at certain angles, at certain angles, at certain angles, we have, again, a pattern similar to interference because uh, uh, waves interfere destructively to uh, have um, dark spots. 
This is about question 11. Question 12, how does the width of the central region of the single slit diffraction pattern change as the wavelength of the light increases? So this is again important for a diffraction. The width is of the central mix maximum. The width is of the central maximum. So it's all related to the angle. So sine theta is proportional to lambda, as we said. Also sine theta is inversely proportional to d. D is the uh, width of the narrow slit. So the slit is Okay, separation D is inversely proportional with sine theta. It means that as the slit becomes narrower or decreases, the pattern is with its central maximum increases because inversely proportional. So, uh, yes, the answer is increases as the light wave uh, with longer wavelengths diffract more. Question number um, 13. Question number 14, monochromatic light shines through two dif uh, different diffraction grating. The second grating produces a pattern uh, which the first order and second order maximum are more uh, wider um, apart. Use this information to tell if there is more or lower per centimeter, line is per centimeter in which grating. So question number 14. We have two diffraction grating. We have two diffraction grating. We want to know the number of lines per centimeter or separation between the slits. We have two of them. But it says the second one, the second one, as in the question, the second one is more more separated, so uh, it's more separate apart. It means when the two uh, diffraction gate, we use two diffraction grating, we have different angles. So as we said that, because sine theta is inversely proportional to D, so it means that when one over number of number of lines. What we mean by that? We mean that the sine theta is directly proportional to number of lines, or sometimes we say slits. Okay. So as the number of slits increases, it means that the width of the central maximum also increases. So of course, the answer, the sine theta, is inversely proportional to d which is a reciprocal of the number of lines per centimeter, the grating that spread uh, the pattern the most has the most lines per centimeter. Okay, let's move on Go to question number 15. Question number 15. Again, question number 15 is about diffraction and which equation we should use. If light with a wavelength lambda, question number 15, lambda is equal to 353 nanometer, is passed through diffraction grating with 795 slits per centimeter. Whenever they said with 900, 700, 800, 1000, 10,000 slits per centimeter, so you should find D. A distance uh, separation, slit separation. So D is equal to number of number of lines or slits. So it means D is equal to one over seven hundred ninety-five centimeter per lines or centimeters. Find the angle at which would observe the second order maximum. M equal to two for second for second order maximum maximum as I said before it means bright one so M is equal to two now we have lambda we have D we have M we need theta angle so at, um, find the angle to find the angle the equation we should use. 
d sine theta equals to m lambda as before. For a bright one, d sine theta equals m lambda. Uh, so, yes, we need theta. So, sine theta equals m lambda over d theta equal to sine inverse m lambda over d. So, sine inverse m is equal to 2 lambda equals to 353. But it is in nanometer while the separation. You have to know that they are they have different different uh, units uh, nanometer centimeter. So you could change nanometer to meter as well as you change uh, d from centimeter to meter. And you could do the easier way, which is just change the lambda to centimeter by multiplying it by ten to the power of negative seven. So now you have lambda in centimeter. Also, you have d in centimeter, so it is easier to resolve. So just multiply 353 nanometer by 10 to the power of negative 7, and d, as you see, it's 1 over 795 is already in centimeter. Now, it's very easy to calculate this one. Just first multiply 2 times 353 times 10 to the power of negative 7, and time is because it is an inverse of 795, just multiply it by 795. So yes, it is very easy to times 353 times 10 to the power of negative 7 times 795 equal. So you, now you have the value for this fraction and you now use shift sign, shift sign, and answer. So you have 3.21. 3.21 degree. This is question number 15. And question number 16 is similar to question number 15, so that's why I won't resolve it. So question number 17, 17, what properties does laser ha light have that are not found in the light used to light your home? So of course be aware that lasers, lasers uh, is coherent and monochromatic as well as has too uh, intensity, more intensity than ordinary bulb. Also, uh, its direction cannot be changed easily. So yes, laser light is coherent and monochromatic. Question number 18, laser light is commonly used to demonstrate double slit interference. Explain why laser light is uh, preferable to light from other source uh, for observing interference because we said laser is already coherent so we don't need to have a special device to make it coherent so light must be coherent for interference pattern to form an interference pattern is well defined with monochromatic light and it's coherent and monochromatic question number 19 give two examples in which the uniform direction of laser uh, light is advantageous give two examples in which the high intensity of laser light is advantageous. So answers may include distance measurement because with laser measurements we could measure a distance very accurate, accurately. Also uh, it is used in compact disc players. We use uh, lasers to burn CDs, play CDs as well as and fiber optics communication of course you know fiber what's fiber optic communications so uh, for the second part of question uh, for high intensity yeah answers may include laser surgery and fiber optic communication uh, same question number 20 
Question number 20. The 546.1 nanometer line is, uh, in Mercury is measured at an angle of 81 degree in the third order spectrum of diffraction gravity. Calculate the number of line per centimeter. Yeah, but this question is very important. This question is very important because we need, we need number of slits, number of lights. Yeah, question number 21, uh, sorry, 20, we have lambda, which is 546.1 nanometers, and also we have theta, 81 degree, third order spectrum, m equal to 3 of a diffraction rating, calculate number of lines. What do we need? We need number of lines. Now, D sine theta equals m lambda. We need to find D first. D is m lambda over sine theta. But because D is in an inverse of number of lines, because D is an inverse of number of lines or slates, so it's equal to m lambda over sine theta. So you could measure number of lines very precise way. So number of lines equals to just inverse the equation. So it becomes sine theta over m lambda. So number of lines equals sine 81 over m is 3 and lambda 546.1 nanometer so multiply it with negative 9 to make it meter so yeah it's easy just calculate the divide sine 81 by bracket 3 times 10 546.1 times 10 to the power of negative 9. So we have 6,028 lines. Okay, uh, lines. Oh, um, but, uh, one more time, be careful with the question. You see, I calculate the number of lines per centimeter, but I'm already changing it to meter. But it has to be in centimeter. So that's why change it to centimeter by multiplying 10 to the power of negative seven. So yes, you have number of lines per centimeter now, because what I am already done, just multiplying it the lambda by 10 to the power of negative seven to make it centimeter instead of meter. Uh, hope you um, have a good time with us and uh, we, meet another day one more time. Thank you very much.